Assalamu alaikum respected brothers and sisters. Welcome to our channel. Today we delve into what this world saw about the bodies of Sahaba. Have you ever wondered what happens to a prophet's body after they are buried? You might be shocked to learn that the answer is clouded in mystery and steeped in tradition. In this video, we will look at the unique traditions and beliefs surrounding some of the history's most famous spiritual leaders' final resting places. We'll unearth the secrets of what happens to the bodily shape of these visionary individuals, from ancient prophetic customs to present activities. Allah the Almighty is so kind to all of His creations that His kindness is so great that we can't even begin to understand it. He is also just in the sense that He provides those who deserve what they deserve. And in all honesty, some people deserve a lot, a lot more than others. There is a portion of humankind that's deserving of more, a class that stands out from the others. They're selected by Allah, who uses His boundless wisdom and knowledge to make His decisions. They're picked in such a way that they're given specific advantages over other people. One of these advantages is that many of them are totally preserved from all the stages of the breakdown process. In point of fact, on the other hand, their bodies give off a gorgeous odor that's unlike any other odor that can be discovered on this planet. Even after their souls have been snatched by the angel of death, these persons are often found to be smiling, despite the fact that the doctors and scientists would proclaim them to be officially and scientifically dead. Do not think of those who are killed in the cause of Allah as having passed away. They are not dead, rather they are with their Lord and they have food and drink. Here are just a few examples, proofs and situations that demonstrate how Allah can, has, and does prevent the bodies of some of His chosen servants from decaying. We hope that we can learn from this and use it as an example of how Allah helps His chosen followers in ways that the mind can't fully understand and the intellect can't fully comprehend. We discover evidence that corpses of the prophets do not decay in the authentic sunnah that they left behind. The Prophets, peace and blessings be on all of them. Bodies don't break down. It's against the law for the ground to eat them. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, The Prophets are alive in their graves and pray. On the night of the Isra, night journey, I passed by Musa, who was standing in his grave and praying. The Messenger of Allah, Allah bless him and give him peace, said, Indeed, the best of your days is the day of Friday. On it, Adam was created, his soul was taken, the resurrecting blast will be, and the destroying blast will be. So, send many blessings on me because truly your blessings will be presented to me. The companions asked, O Messenger of Allah, how will our blessings on you be presented to you when you have decomposed? He replied, Indeed Allah Almighty and Majestic has made the bodies of the prophets forbidden for the ground. This is what's called the idea of incorruptibility. The idea of incorruptibility, which means that the body doesn't break down even after a long time has passed, isn't addressed in any Islamic text except when it comes to the messengers and prophets. There is nothing in the Quran or Sunnah that could explain why this happens to people other than the prophets, whether they are heroes, good people, or close friends of Allah, young or old, male or female. We don't have any divine texts that talk about this or explain why it happened or what it means. We also don't know if it is a sign that the person is righteous or if it could happen to someone who isn't righteous. Allah, may He be praised and honored, doesn't tell us in His book why some bodies are safe from decay and decomposition and others aren't. As for the messengers and prophets, their bodies can break down because Allah may He be praised and exalted, has made it impossible for the earth to treat them like it treats other dead bodies. But this doesn't mean that everyone whose body is still whole is as, as religious and good as the messengers and prophets. This is not a good comparison, and this is not the right result, because there may be natural factors that keep the body from breaking down. All we can say about this is that if the person in question was a good and moral person, we hope this is a sign of righteousness and acceptance with Allah. May He be praised. So you may learn that all you can do is hope and pray. 
So if we find a Muslim whose body didn't break apart after burial, we ask Allah, may he be exalted, to make it a sign of mercy, virtue, and goodness for the person who died. But we don't think it's a proof of the person's righteousness and piety, either because it's unlikely or because it's certain. Some non-Muslims have this happen to them, which can be described. It could be because of the natural things in the body, in the ground where he is buried, or in that area. This is important research that scientists and experts could look into to find out the scientific reasons. For example, they could study the soil and the types of bacteria that live in it, or they could find out if something was put on the body that helped it stay preserved. All of these could be reasons why it's still around. This is an important study that scientists and researchers should do. It could also be because some fanatics tried to trick people by making the body look like it hasn't broken down. In reality, the body is decaying and falling apart, but it looks like it's still together because it's been dressed, filled in, and waxed to make it look like it's still together. This is done to prove that the religion or sect that the dead person used to follow is true. Focusing on emotional preaching and deception instead of studying based on reason is a common strategy among many religions and sects, but it backfires in the end. And they can't keep fooling people or their followers forever. The body may be whole, but there is a difference between a body that looks whole and a body that looks fresh like the person just died. In many cases, the former is true. In these cases, the body looks like it's whole but a single touch is enough to make it fall apart. In rare cases, the body looks and smells fresh, and sometimes blood can be seen gushing out of it. If the person was a good Muslim, we hope this is a sign of their righteousness and honor before Allah. May he be glorified and exalted. But we still can't be sure of that, and we don't have any shari'i proof to show it. Rather, it's just the hope that it's a sign that Allah respects these people. We ask people to look into the fact that some bodies don't decay in their graves and study it logically. They should look at it from both a biological and a religious point of view. We haven't seen anyone in an Islamic textbook think that this is a sign that the person who died was part of the right sect or faith. This goes against what the clergy wants, which has been studied and written about. The clergy uses wax and other chemicals to make the bodies of their leaders and saints look like they were kept alive by God, and as if this is a message from the God to believe in Christianity or Judaism. All of this is a form of exaggeration, using emotion and lying, but church can't trick people who can think for themselves. Here's one such example of today's word. Wahiyuddin Misri, 1993. He was a very skilled fighter and teacher from Afghanistan. He came to Bosnia with his brother, Usmanuddin and Muthaz from Peshawar at the start of the war. He was the leader of the Mujahideen, Islamic fighters in Bosnia. His title was Amir, which means head, and he was a wary, professional soldier with a strong military mind. Even though he was the Amir, he was also wary, holy and humble. When a UN arbitrator asked to shake his hand after the prisoners swept in 1993, he refused and said, I don't shake hands with non-believers. He was a brave brother, and after the swap of the prisoners, he told his people, After this day, any Mujahid that's captured by the Croats must fight until he is killed and not allow himself to be captured. Two weeks later, he and Abu Khalid al-Qatari were in the same car when they went into enemy land and were attacked by the Croats. He went out into the world with his brothers and fought until he died. After three months under the ground, his body was brought back to the Mujahideen. It was still bleeding. And there you have it. We hope you found this exploration of the fate of the Prophet's bodies after burial as fascinating as we did. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more inspirational stories and Islamic Khanate. Thank you for taking the time to watch and may Allah bless us all. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.